Baba Ki Jai. This is the 12th tape, and we're resuming directly from the end of the 11th. It's still August 3rd, afternoon, 1994, mm-hmm. and I'm in Mandali Hall at Nurzad with Merwan Jisawala. Just before the tape ran out, you had embarked into the story of Dun... 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 Dun, Dun Umrigar. Umrigar. Yes, so as I was saying, she was... Uh, she came into the Rani's contact with, I think, probably from her husband's side mm. because he was a great uh, race goer and mm. all these Maharajas of old were like that. So <clears throat> probably there was friendship with the racing circle and all that. And uh, in Pune, the racing season would start sometime in June. Mm. So uh, just when Baba would leave Guru Prasad, the, the real season for Pune would start. Mm-hmm. Because the monsoon season in uh, in Pune is very pleasant. Mm-hmm. The rains come, you get cloud cover f- from the heat, yeah. and uh, you get good rains. But it's unlike Bombay, yeah. where it just keeps pouring and it's uh, it's very dull and out. Mm-hmm. All you, it's not a good place to be in Bombay during the monsoons. But in Pune, it's 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 ideal weather. Yeah, and the rains when they stop, uh, and it would dry out very fast, and then you would have beautiful weather. Mm. So mm, uh, then the races would start at that time <coughs> because, because the Bombay race course would be too wet for the horses, so they would all come over. So she would have uh, use of Guru Prasad. Dhanum Rigar and our friends and all. Right after Baba left. Yeah. And then later on when Rani passed the order that now none should come to Guru Prasad exclusively for Baba's use. So then Umriga's coming to Guru Prasad came to an end and she was peeved about that. <laughs> and a little um, angry with who was this Mayor Baba and mm-hmm. Rani has gone into some cult sort of figure <laughs> <laughs> and eventually then uh, it's uh, we hear Dhanum Rigar one day coming here after many many years mm. after Baba dropped his body and then she tells a story how she came to Baba and it was through her own son mm. <coughs> so as I said, her son was her. His name was Karl. Karl Umriger. He was the top jockey uh, in India. In a very early age, he rose very, very fast, and he would win most of the good races, and was very popular with the race racing crowd. So, <coughs> others would be jealous of him. Yeah, and. Uh, in one of these very prestigious races, probably it was the Indian Derby or something, that uh, his horse was uh, making good progress and was about to win. And uh, somebody from the crowd it was or what, we don't know. Or was it one of his (coughs) other colleagues, they plotted to... and. Somehow his horse stumbled or something happened and he was thrown off the horse back. Mm. And as he was in front, the other horses came up and he was trampled underfoot. Mm. And he just died there on the track itself. So a very young and promising life was suddenly snuffed out. Mm. And when his mother heard this, she, she was in deep shock. She just couldn't believe this had happened. And it was many years she was in depression and grief and sorrow. So it, ha- some, it happened that there were some friends of hers who had similar experiences of some grief uh, of departed near ones. And uh, <clears throat> they were given contact with the departed spirits 
by the means of this planchet board, planchet or what they call it? I don't know, I've heard of a Ouija board, is it? Something like that? Ouija yeah. Whatever it's, it's you, you have to hold a pencil in the hand and then just think about it. They do something and yeah. then the the spirit comes and starts writing through your hand. That's mm-hmm. that's their experience. They tell us. So th- these friends suggested to Dhan to get in contact with her son this way. So then she w- went along and it seems that uh, her hand began to write something. It was first the letter M that came out. She couldn't make anything of it. Then further sequences, the seances or sequences, I don't know what they call it. Seances. Seances. The word Meher Baba came out. Mm. And she recollected this name but then what she didn't know but then it's, it, it went on further and go to Mer Baba the whole sentence came through eventually and she said it was time that I must go and find out who this Mer Baba is and then she phoned up her friends there and they then told her to visit Mer Abad and uh, <coughs> she went there and then after going there she came here and it was I remember the last day of the season uh, for the pilgrims Mm. and she had come so she was there and then we didn't know anything about her story she just came she was there she was here with the other pilgrims Mm. and then (coughs) went off and it was then she she was uh, instantly hooked as it were <laughs> after she went to Merabad and when she came here and saw the loving atmosphere mm. she immediately knew that her son had guided her rightly mm. so <coughs> that is how she came to Baba and indirectly Guru Prasad yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the means with which she came here this contact with spirits actually Baba had always always discouraged us to with such things because Baba always said that to have contact with spirits is an extremely dangerous thing Mm. it is it is genuine but sometimes uh, some evil spirits could take advantage of the situation Mm. and then we ordinary mortals would come to great grief and disaster. So Baba always asked us to stay very clear of all such activities. Mm. Never encouraged anybody to do it. Mm. And in fact, uh, Eraj Mani indirectly mm-hmm. brought home to her this, mm. that uh, much later of course, uh, that now that you've come to Baba through this means, now you should uh, stop uh, doing all this because I think she's continued contacting her son this way. Mm. So mm. It, it went on for quite some time. <laughs> so, but uh, men, uh, and through her, she br- uh, she brought many other people in distress similar to hers. So a great big group has come to Baba through this means. Astonishing how Baba uses yeah. me means. So <coughs> in the earlier days it was the drugs which brought ba- uh, p- people to Baba and Baba had asked everyone to not to dabble in drugs. Mm. But even in those things when people dabble they come to Baba and of course then we tell them to dissociate from it. So every bad thing also has a good end, (laughs) as far as Baba is concerned. So, yes, so (coughs) in Guru Prasad, 1959, I think it was, that uh, Baba sent word for me to get the thing ready. We got the Rani's permission as usual and uh, made preparations for... Baba's stay, summer stay at Guru Prasad and uh, 
<coughs> yeah. In 1959, uh, Sam and Roshan uh, had a small um, baby girl as Baba's gift after their marriage, you know. The year before. Yeah, the year before they were married. And uh, Mera was born, uh, the child was named Mera by Baba later. So the girl child was born to Roshan. Uh, sometime in February, I think it was 21st February or so, mm. just before Baba was due to come. So we sent a telegram to Baba, the child is born, what name we should give? And Baba sent a reply that the child should be named Mera. So <coughs> she was named Mera and after uh, she was delivered then she was brought and kept at Bindra house because it being a bigger house so huh? yeah so uh, Roshan was there the child was there and uh, <coughs> Baba came uh, to Guru Prasad and then was anxious to see the child <laughs> so came over to Bindra house Baba came over yeah and then saw the child, played with it in, in his lap. And uh, the, so Baba then would come almost daily. And uh, there would be sharbat, because he would come right in the dead of heat, you know. At about 1.30 or 2 o'clock, Baba would, would select the time to come to Bindaraus in the month of March, April, May. So it would be blazing hot in the, in the outs, on the outside and temperatures would be about 120 in the open. <laughs> and the Mandli would accompany Baba in a 10 minute car ride and they'd be all drenched in perspiration. <laughs> Baba would be coming to see Mira. Yeah, so Baba would be saying, I'm not coming to see you all. I come to see baby Mera. She was called baby Mera, <laughs> to distinguish from Mera. And uh, so we, are, we would keep cold sharbat ready. And then Baba would distribute sharbat to all the mandli, then dip his little finger and make Mera... Uh, lick his finger, you know, <laughs> and she would enjoy it, you know, the sweet uh, sharbat. So Francis happened to be there, and uh, he would say, what a lucky baby she is, the, the <laughs> typical Australian accent, you know. <laughs> and uh, Rano was standing aside, and he tells Rano, Rano, why don't you die soon? and then you'll get born and you'll be fed by Baba like this. <laughs> so Rana says, why don't you die first? <laughs> yeah. So Baba would come. And my father, you know, he had took a great fancy for the little child. Mm -hmm. What he thought was that his, it was his own daughter who had been born again. Oh, and really? Baba named it Mera also, so it must be my daughter Meru. <laughs> <laughs> so Baba then said, no, no, it's not, not, not her. Not, he didn't tell, <coughs> tell Papa, but he told us that it's somebody else very close to me who has come again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I've, I've got him here again, yeah, near me, one of my old disciples. So that uh, then uh, on one occasion, Baba says that Baba sent Gavir to ch uh, check on her health and all, the child's health. And uh, Gavir said, Baba, it's time that we should pierce the ears of the child, this is the right time to do it. So Baba Salva heard the child so much, he was so anxious about mm. everything. Uh, it, Gavis, no, Baba, it's just a matter of 
putting one little pin across. It's a tiny little thing yeah. of flesh there. The Baba says, no, no, let me come and you do it and I'll hold the child. <laughs> <laughs> so, Baba showing such yeah, concern. So this. much that he held her in her laps and then uh, Baba says, don't, don't do it too, too quickly, be very careful, you'll hurt the child, how will it feel? And Gavai said, I never felt so nervous in my life. I pierced so many children's ears. <laughs> and Baba made a shake, as it were. And a little pierce on it. it was, uh, they put something in the ear and got pierced. And Mera started yelling loud, of course. And Gavai tried to do the other. He said, no, 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 not now. That's enough, that's enough. You've caused too much suffering to the little one. <laughs> I can't bear to see it. <laughs> <laughs> and before him is the slaughter of the whole world right, going on. Right, right. Yeah. So this is how it is with Baba. You Salt can, and butter and yeah, steel. Is that's same. right. So we could see the concern that he felt for that little child, you know, yeah. and the pain that it, the child underwent as if he was having it himself. So he was saying, no, no, protecting the child. <laughs> Eventually, Gavai came later and quietly pierced the other ear. <laughs> so that it was much easier for her to do it that way. <laughs> I've never heard of a story before of Baba with a little baby like that showering such you know, yeah. concern. So Baba could be so very protective and so so tender with with the situ with whatever situation it warranted him. So yeah, that was the beginning of Mera's uh, present career in life. <laughs> it was a nice beginning. And a very lucky one, of course. And she was a very, very brilliant child, of course. Very sharp, very intelligent. So much so that she was hardly four years old when she uh, could recite the entire Parvadigar prayer by heart. Really? Yeah. Four years old? Four years old, mind you. So, uh, at, uh, I think... Uh, it was the opening of the Pune Center, and 63, with 63, yeah, and she was four years old, 59 she was born, yeah. So uh, she, uh, the the prayers had to be done, and she stood up and recited this prayer. <laughs> yeah, there was a mic put in front of her, and loud she said the prayer, and Baba was so happy. See how how clever and intelligent she is, <laughs> without missing a word, huh? mind you. Yeah. <laughs> Must have been a cute sight. Yeah, and in fact, when she was en was to be entered in the school, so uh, her mother Roshan took her to the convent where Mera and Mani had studied earlier in their childhood mm -hmm. in Pune. It's the same convent of Jesus and Mary. Uh -huh. It's a very famous school there, <clears throat> much sought after by parents for their children. Very centrally located also. So she went there and said, would you enter my child? And the mother said, no child, all the, all the school is totally full, I cannot accommodate her anymore. So, but Roshan said, my child is so bright. Come on, Mira, recite the prayer to mother. So she recited that prayer. And the mother was flabbergasted the way this child was repeating these big sounding words and so fluently. She said, whatever happens, I'm going to get this child admitted in my school. Come watch me. And an extra bench and seat was put in the class and she got admitted <laughs> because of Baba's Parvadigar Priya <laughs> in a Christian mission school, my dear. Yeah. So, I remember that. So, did uh, 
Um, Roshan and Mera um, continued to stay in Bindra house through those years? For some more time. Then uh, eventually they shifted to Ganeshkin for some time mm -hmm. and uh, were there for quite a long time. Yeah. Because Sam was off on the high school. Yes, so Sam was off on the high school. Yeah. And then Dolly, her s Mera's sister was born. Mm -hmm. Still they were at Bindra house and then eventually I was able to get another place for them. Mm. nearby known as Vilu House mm. and ever since then they shifted to Vilu House mm. which is quite close by yeah. it's very near Baba House Vilu House yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. so that's the story of Mera then the, the Baba's uh, stay progressed in Guru Prasad uh, <coughs> and uh, one day Rano uh, suddenly to kill. As I would said before, Rano and Na Najama would be sent to Bindra house when Baba came to Pune. Mm. They would all travel with Baba from Merazad and then after this, Baba settled down at Guru Prasad, Naja, Naja and Rano would be sent to Bindra house and they would assist my mother and Manu to prepare food. So Baba's food mm. was cooked at Vendra House and sent over yeah. to Guru. Not only Baba, but the Manlis also. How far? How far was it from Guru? It was like several kilometers, isn't it? Uh, well, yeah, I should say about four or five <coughs> kilometers. So it'd be yeah. driven over in a car for Baba's meals. No, no. Um, the boys would come with tiffins, tiffin boxes, uh -huh. uh, uh, on cycle, huh. or sometimes the car would come. If there were more people uh, Baba had invited, right. so then big big pots would have to be sent, then the car would come. Huh. So uh, I'm surprised, though. I mean, wouldn't the food be cold by the time it got there? I would have thought it would just be cooked at Guru Prasad, which must have No, cooked. no. It was never cooked at Guru Prasad. No, no. Yeah. So only, only the last year, when I will come to that, I'll yeah. tell you how that was done. But never at Guru Prasad. So your mother was always centrally involved in the preparation, I mean, right there. Yeah, the mother and Manu. Uh -huh. And Naja to help. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, your mother and Manu were the two principal shepherds yeah. as well. <laughs> well, that must have been nice for them. Yeah. Well, and Banu Masi would be there, of course, and Roshan would come over. Yeah. So many people to help, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. everybody wanted to. So there. Yeah. By the way, did your mother still put sugar in the food? Oh yeah, that would uh, be there. <laughs> <laughs> you try it, it'll give you a very good taste, you know, uh -huh. but very little, mind you. Yeah. Put it in your house, you know, plain dal and see the difference. <laughs> <laughs> so it gives us a very nice taste to the food. Yeah. Provided it's just just a little bit. Yeah. So the uh, Naja and Rano would be there. And one day Rano took very ill at uh, Bindra house. Yeah. Suddenly she had these <coughs> runs and uh, vomiting mm. and she wouldn't be able to retain anything. Mm. So <coughs> uh, we called the local doctors around and mm. tried to treat her. But uh, her condition worsened mm. and uh, at that time my father, that's Papa, he was also not keeping good health. He was rather keeping indifferent health. And my uh, father's regimen was very clock-like, you know. Mm. So <laughs> at this time he had to get up four o'clock in the morning, would, his day would begin. Mm. And then prayers, as usual, loud prayers yeah. early in the morning, and then early breakfast, and he would be off on the road for his morning walks and right. rounds and visits to his friends, <laughs> the old time <laughs> pensioners. Uh -huh. And he would be back home by 11 or so, and then a quick lunch, and then he would always nap for a, an hour or so in the afternoon. And then at two in the afternoon he was ready again on his feet, out again on the road, whether it be heat, sun, rain, shine, anything. <laughs> <laughs>
and then by six or seven in the evening you'd be back and then uh, would retire early so <coughs> uh, but uh, for the last few days we noticed that he would keep indifferent health then uh, he asked me to get some medicines for him the doctor came and examined him but couldn't find anything much wrong he complained of uh, heaviness in the chest so I said let's get uh, some uh, cardiogram or something done so he says no 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 I, I don't like to waste money like that don't do that I'll be depriving you people of that much money I said oh, Papa what is this you're talking no no son my time is now very near I said, Papa, you're talking like this for many years now. So, you, you might as well stop saying such. No, no, you don't, people don't take me seriously, but I tell you, I'm not feeling well now. This, this is how you would, would be saying for, the, for some days previously. And uh, he stopped going out. He said, I'm feeling too weak, would lie in bed, which was most unusual for him. So... <clears throat> This day when Rano was very ill, he was very concerned about her and kept telling me what will happen you know, some, if something happens to her, it will be very difficult, foreigner, this, that. Mm. Uh, so <clears throat> that evening, Baba came over. So uh, it was, I think, about five or six in the evening. Papa was just seated on his chair quietly in his room ba and Baba went there and when Baba would come he wouldn't come out to see Baba in the hall or anything he expected Baba to come and see him in his room <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Baba would go there and meet him yeah so then uh, this this day I remember Baba who took the glass of sherbet and mm. told Papa now take this mm. so Papa says Baba I'm feeling nervous about Rano she's a foreigner if supposing something happens to her well, there will be a lot of queries and problems so Baba says light a match to all this that means mm. just let these thoughts we set fire to now. Don't think about anything. What you do is just repeat my name. Now, th this is the time for you to stop worrying about anything else. Just, just repeat my name and everything will be fine. So, then he was pacified and he drank the sharbat Baba gave him. And then Baba left. And of course he saw Rano also and uh, consoled her and said not to worry. But in the night, uh, uh, <clears throat> in the night uh, she became very serious, you know, mm. and uh, constantly kept vomiting. So I, I got up and tried to get hold of a doctor mm. in the middle of the night. It was very difficult. Somehow I got some doctor to come and then uh, the doctor examined Rano and gave us something. But uh, the vomiting continued all night long mm -hmm. and we all had a very, uh, very distressed night, you know. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> next day morning, Baba again comes, uh, early morning. And uh, then uh, <coughs> Baba's, uh, Manu tell, tells Baba that Baba, she's on the point of passing away now. So it's up to you. So then Baba says, come, bring me a glass of sharbat. And, and that is fresh lime with some sugar and salt added. Mm. And a big glass Baba called for. Then Baba <coughs> went to Rano's room. And Rano's room was on the opposite side of the veranda from Papa's room. Papa was on this side, Rano was on the other side. Mm. There was a long veranda in between. 
Mm-hmm. Baba walked there and then uh, with a spoon, Rana could barely open her eyes. She had become so frail and weak. Mm-hmm. She, uh, she couldn't speak anything. She, and she was on the, on the point of collapse almost. Mm-hmm. So Baba says, look, I'm pour, pouring this teaspoonful in your mouth. Now try to retain it. Because she couldn't retain anything. Mm-hmm. And that was what was causing dehydration. So then Manu held her mouth and Baba poured the the teaspoonful of sharbat. Mm. And it almost came out, you know. Mm. But she was able to retain it. Then Baba poured a few more teaspoonfuls. And Baba says, that's nice. Mm. Now that she's retained this, She'll take a turn for the better. Have no fear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then told Manu that every f- five or ten minutes feed a teaspoonful of this, this sharbat. Mm-hmm. He had dipped her, his hand in the sharbat. Mm-hmm. And Rano began to retain the fluid. Mm-hmm. And s- she got over this. But then when Baba went to Papa, again Papa was very nervous. Baba, what is this? And then again Baba in the evening came and Baba again gave share. But Papa Mm -hmm. says, forget everything. You don't worry about Rano. Leave that to me. You just worry about thinking about me now. This is the time for you to do that. So... Then Papa was quiet. He had the the sharbat, and then, ah, but uh, <coughs> that morning Baba then tells me that to, tonight when you go to, when in the night you have to go to bed at ten o'clock at night mm-hmm. and see that you go to bed because you had a very restless night and you'll spoil your health. So at 10, go to bed. It's my order to you. So I said, yes, Baba. Then in the afternoon, it seems he had again paid a visit to Bindraos. I had gone to office. Mm. So <clears throat> Baba came over to the office and his car was outside. So, <clears throat> have you been to coffee house in Pune? No. You haven't been there. Uh, Coffee house. Uh, so that was where my office was, near Dorabji store. Yeah. You've been to Dorabji right. store? I know Dorabji store, yeah. And then you know that big, big uh, several story high building nearby? I think so. There was not that height of building at that time. Oh. That was, l- later those floors were added. Oh. It was a, a one story building. Mm. And my office was in the corner oh. there. Oh. And Baba's car stood in front there mm. on the road and he sent somebody in to call me from the office. Mm. And Baba came, I went to Baba and all the office people gathered there and one had a <laughs> sight of Baba. <laughs> so Baba <coughs> tells me that, uh, do you remember? Tonight at 10, go to bed. I've come to remind you about this. I said, yes, Baba, I will do that. And then Baba drove off, again making the sign 10 at, yeah. as the car was going away. Yeah. And then in the evening he came and then gave sharbat to Papa. And while going he said, remember at 10 you have to go to bed. Remember that. So then <coughs> well, in the evening then Papa was resting in bed and he kept calling me off and on so I was attending to him and he was feeling very restless. Mm. Then <coughs> at about nine Baba sent Erech and Gaver to mm, to check Papa. Gaver examined Papa's heart and blood pressure and all that. He, she found it all right. But he's he seemed restless, that's all. So by the Neeraj gave him a little soup and he had a little soup and then they both went away. Mm. At, at about 5 to 10, 
then I take my pillow and a little sheet and go outside. It was hot, so I was sleeping on the veranda. So I went there and lay down. At 10 I was on the bed. But just then Papa shouted, Merwan, come quick. And I said, oh my God, this old man, what to do now? Baba has given me orders. So I lay down, just put my head on the pillow and then I went back. And Papa, was, that was the last cry he did. And then uh, he had a massive uh, pulmonary uh, embolism, they call it, a sort of stroke in the chest. A big ma- blood clot had happened in the lung. So he could barely breathe. And he was, his breathing was very heavy and very labored. And he was gasping for breath. And he, had, he was all wet with perspiration. Mm. And I thought, my God, now this, this is very serious. So, <clears throat> Naja, my pap- mama said, go and get the doctor quickly. So I tried to get one doctor, but he wouldn't come. So then I went to another doctor. And she was a lady doctor who immediately obliged by coming over. And before I could come back with the doctor, my father was breathing almost his last. And he was breathing very heavily. And uh, they were all shouting Baba's name in his ear. Papa, say Baba's name, say Baba's name. And he just died. The the doctor tried to give some injection, but he didn't respond. So, uh, the next day then um, Baba said it was a toss-up between Rano and Papa. <laughs> and Ra- R- So, I don't know whether he said Papa one or Rano one or something. <laughs> and so Papa passed away. So, just try- round about ten, yeah. this happened, you know. Did, the, did, it, ever, did it come up from... Uh, before Baba, that your his order to you about ten o'clock. Yeah, no, he didn't bring out the order. He didn't bring it. Though I should have told him that, but mm-hmm. it never came out. Mm-hmm. But Baba stressing on ten, 10 was o'clock. yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's when it happened. That's when it happened. Mm-hmm. So the next day, so then I phoned when Papa passed. I phoned Guru Prasad and told Eraj. So Baba sent told Eraj to phone Meiji mm. to come and assist me for the last rites and all that. Mm. And uh, the and I asked when we should arrange for the funeral. So the doctor said that the sooner the better. It, it might l- lead to hemorrhage later. Mm. So have a funeral early. So we decided on doing the mm. funeral ceremonies the next day morning. <clears throat> because in the Zoroastrians, the funeral ceremony is never done after sundown. So if that takes place in the night, it's uh, the next day morning. Yeah. So during the daytime only, these ceremonies are done. So then Baba, we told that the funeral is the next day morning. So we just conveyed to Baba. And Baba said, do you want to go? He asked Eraj. So Eraj says, Baba, whatever you say. So he says, let me help Merwan, you stay here only. So Eraj continued to stay there. And uh, (coughs) then I had to arrange for Papa's uh, death certificate and uh, permission for burial and all, whatever whatever funeral ceremonies are to be done. So we need municipal uh, permission for that. Mm. So I had to get get that in the night and make all preparations. We shifted the body to to a place where the these rites are conducted by the by the community. There's a place for this. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's on Dasturme Road. Just, uh, I think, of three or four blocks 
of Baba house there, uh-huh. yeah, opposite Baba's house. Uh-huh. So it's a place for mm, bringing dead bodies there. There, then there they are bathed, they are wrapped in cloth, mm-hmm. and then the priests come in the morning mm-hmm. and do the the special prayers mm-hmm. for the dead. And after that, the body is then taken out to the Tower of Silence mm-hmm. and disposed of. Yeah. So <coughs> we took Papa's body there and got it washed and everything, and was he was. And kept there for the funeral to be done next morning. So in the morning, Baba tells Eraj, "Come on, let's go to Bindra House." Mm. So early morning, Baba comes in the car. I was of course not there. I was mm. in that place there, and uh, Eraj and Baba and Jimmy was there, I think. <coughs> and of course, I forgot to mention that one day prior to this. Baba had called a meeting at Guru Prasad of his Monday from Nagar and certain places. Mm. So many of the Baba's Monday had come um, to Guru Prasad also. So Baba asked all of them to go and attend the funeral. Uh-huh. So there was a big crowd of Baba's Monday and then Baba lovers in Pune. So they were just like um, Baba's mother's funeral. Papa also was a big <laughs> affair, yeah. Quite. And the Lamandali would have known your father well from the times that he was staying in the ashram. Oh yes. So Papa was quite a famous right. <laughs> individual. <laughs> <laughs> so his name, his sign was this, <laughs> the sign of a pistol, you know. <laughs> Baba would say, "Papa means this." <laughs> so. <clears throat> Ba- Baba comes to Bindra House early in the morning and uh, then uh, tells Manu, I'm hungry, mm. prepare some food for me, quick, some dal and rice. So there's a scramble for preparing dal, rice. So Naja was there and Manu said we were hurriedly doing things. So in the meantime, Baba says, Let's go and get some bread in from the shop, from the baker, mm. because I would like to have the dal with the bread, burun bread. Baba would like burun bread. You know, burun is like a sort of brown crusted bread, which is baked from all all sides. It's a, a sort of a spherical, a flattened spherical shape. You know. Uh-huh and very crusty and very tasty to eat mm. yeah and the irani bakeries were famous with, with this sort of bread so when it's fresh it, it tastes very nice crunchy and good mm. so baba like that uh, that bread yeah so he said let's go and get some bread now this baker shop is also on dasturme road mm. So the car passed by the place where the funeral ceremonies were started, you know. Mm-hmm. So Baba says uh, to Eraj, do you want to go and attend the funeral ceremony? Baba Eraj says, Baba, whatever you say. He says, <coughs> go and um, pay your respects to him and come quickly. Mm-hmm. So. Eraj went hurriedly, he came hurriedly inside, bowed down to Papa's body and came back and then drove Baba again to the baker's shop. They were there for some time. Then uh, in the meantime the prayers had finished and uh, the body was being brought out. Baba says, let's go past there again. So they went there. And Baba said to hold the car just a block or two down. And uh, he looked in the, to where the ceremonies were going on and he cast his glance as Papa's body was brought out. Mm. And that's considered very, very good for, for any of us, of course, yes. that Baba should see, our, uh, see us when, in these last moments.
So Papa was really fortunate and uh, Baba cast his glance on, on him and uh, <coughs> then he gave that little discourse to Erez and he asked Erez, oh, what is this you are seeing? So he says, Papa's dead body, Baba. What, what is dead body? He says, it's, it's his corpse, Baba. But then what is it? So he says, then Baba says, the, the dead body is the excreta of the soul. <laughs> Just as you eat food and you absorb the nutrients and then you excrete it. Similarly, the soul is like a like a food to the body, uh, to the, the body is like a food to the soul yeah. and after its work is done, the soul excretes it yeah. and the dead body is the excreta of the soul. <laughs> yeah. So a little discourse there, yeah. uh, while Papa is being brought out <laughs> and then Baba drove away. He says, my work is finished, now let's go back. Uh-huh. So they went to Bindra's and Baba had his food there which is also very auspicious for Papa that Baba should come to the house at that time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. And Baba says, I've done my work for Papa. Now you all need not do any further ceremonies except the fourth day ceremony. And then no more ceremonies for him. Because in the Parsis, they do ceremonies for years together for the I departed. Yeah. Uh-huh. Was your father... Um, a religious Zoroastrian in that sense? Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. quite, uh, he wanted to be very much social with the right. Parsis around. And <laughs> he had a dread of being um, uh, ostracized by the community. Uh-huh. So he would, he would go to the fire temple, force me to go to the fire temple. Uh-huh. <laughs> Until one day I just rebelled and stopped going. And, uh, <laughs> Every time my birthday came or some good, uh, some big, uh, fun, uh, some big uh, festival of the Parsis would be there, he would make me go to the fire temple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you're, it, it sounds like he was really quite a character oh, all yeah, the years yeah. in Baba's love. And even, you know, uh, you know, though he gave up his oldest son, Erich, to... Baba, he doesn't seem to have held that against Baba. No, never like that, but uh, still he wanted the family to be around him. Yeah, and uh, sure. Yeah. So, well, but for Baba, he, he was all for Baba. Yeah. And uh, now I see in the old time correspondence also lying in the trust records, there are Papa's letters and it's a revelation to read those letters. Really? With such love and uh, respect he writes to Baba. Yeah. And Baba sent him on many errands. He has even gone to Rangoon. Really? Yeah. Ah. In the old times when we were in Bangalore. Yeah. And Baba sent him for, for some work and then he we was the... Bangalore? That was during the World War, right? Yeah, the yeah. War, and then, yeah, then that was dangerous. Yeah, he was talking about the blackout in Rangoon and this and that before the Japanese occupation. And, I see. <laughs> and then he was the one who had to wind up the whole Bera Mangla yeah. Universal Spiritual Center. Yeah. yeah, so many things he, would, he had done. So, that way Papa was very practical. Mm. He never showed any emotion and he did never liked people to be emotional about anything. Down to earth, practical mm. <laughs> man of earth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Baba liked such people. Yeah. yeah. Honest. Straightforward. Yeah. 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 He never had that uh, rank rancor in the heart. He would speak out anything. He had a very short temper, but then also very soft-hearted. So that was Papa, and that was the end of Papa. Yeah, 1959. (laughs) Yeah, 29th March it was, I remember. Uh He passed away on 29th March, 
and uh, then this Baba said, now I've done everything for Papa. You have to do nothing for him. And, and the fourth day ceremony, as Baba says, is important because it's on that day that the soul's link with its previous physical body snaps. Yeah. In what way that is, we don't know, but the, until then the soul, as it were, lingers yeah. in memory of the past, of the, of the body that has been dropped. Yeah. And the link snaps on the fourth day. So that's why that prayer is important. Uh-huh. Yeah. And we have a very important prayer I at see. four in the morning. That's the time. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, <laughs> charam they call it. Charam means the fourth day. Yeah. It's a Persian word. Yeah. And meanwhile, Rana went on to live for another 25 years. Rana then picked up health and she was back her old bouncing self, yeah. and that was all forgotten. Yeah. And then they told Rano later that Rano, it was a choice between you and Papa. <laughs> toss up, a toss up. <laughs> and Baba decided to <laughs> let Papa, to release Papa and hold on to yeah. you. <laughs> so I think we'll uh, stop here now. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Avatar Nair Baba Ki Jai. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. This is the 10th of August, yeah. uh, resuming on the same 12th tape on a, another day. And I'm in Mandalay Hall, middle of pilgrim season, Wednesday, uh, with Marwan Jesuala, continuing reminiscences of the beloved, <coughs> one of the activities dear to the heart of his lovers. Hmm. Last time, Mirwan, you had talked about, uh, uh, concluded with uh, your father's father's death, and hmm. Rano's becoming sick, and your father's becoming sick at, at the very same time. Yeah. Rano coming back from the very edge of death, and your father passing over to Baba. That's right. You had come up to that. Yes, uh, that was a very <coughs> uh, very uh, rem- uh, very big incident in our life because we lost a member of our family after a good many years because the last time that occurred was with my sister way back in 1953 mm-hmm. and uh, now it was another member had gone and uh, we did miss Papa Mm. although he had a very rough exterior but uh, we 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 felt his absence for some time at least Mm. in fact Baba once remarked to me after Papa passed away are you feeling relieved or something (laughs) So, (laughs) so I was uh, I was too much, uh, um, uh, what should I say, moved by that uh, at that time, so I, I couldn't give any reply to Baba, mm. and he didn't say anything further about it, mm. but he knew how I was feeling about it, mm. and the other man, Manli would come and try to cheer me up. That, Papa is now with Baba and all that. Mm. And of course, we knew Papa was really fortunate that Baba was there during his last days. Mm. And right till the, the final ceremony, as it were. Yeah. So, Papa was really blessed. <coughs> and uh, thereafter, uh, Baba's stay at Guru Prasad also was coming to a close and uh, I remember it was the last day of his stay at Guru Prasad the, the morning we would be called to Guru Prasad from Bindra house to take charge of the whole Bindra house I mean the whole Guru Prasad mm. because uh, the <coughs> Baba's entourage would leave 
and leave everything there at Guru Prasad for us to wind up the whole show as it were. Mm. The crockery, the furniture and all that we would be putting there had to be taken care of, put away, stacked away and all that. Mm. So it would take us practically the whole day to just uh, bring everything in order and hand, hand over the charge of Guru Prasad to the manager again. And then leave. So we were there early in the morning and all packing was going on, pre- hectic preparations for Baba to leave. And uh, <coughs> I remember Mama was there with my aunt Banmasi and uh, Baba was in the Mandli side, Mandli room, you know, the side room of the main hall. The, where also Baba would hold uh, programs, the small programs would be held in that room. Mm. It was quite a big room, of course, mm. but the hall was very big. Of course. So this big room on the side, uh, well, there Baba was there seated on the sofa and he called us in and then <coughs> embraced Mama, said, don't worry. And suddenly Mama burst out crying, you know. She began to weep loudly and Baba was caressing her and says, mm, what's, what's up, what's in your mind? So probably, I don't know what it was, she just wept very loudly in, in Baba's laps as it were, kneeling down before him. And Baba was consoling her and then in between the sobs she was saying, Baba, Eraj is behaving strangely these days. He's so brusque with you and I can't bear the sight of it. I feel he'll become your Judas, Baba. So Baba looks askance, "Um, what is this you're saying? (coughs) (laughs) And he calls Eraj, he says, Eraj, come on, come here. Bairaj says, yes, he comes then. And Mama is continuing this sort of thing, you know. So Bairaj feels very exasperated because he has to attend to all the final packings and all that. So he flares up and he says, Baba, this is not the time for all this. I don't know what, so come to, come over, Mama. So I have to do so many things. (laughs) So Baba says, come here. Um, apply a matchstick to all the other things. This is more important than anything else. Just let everything else go. Just come here. <laughs> so then Eraj grumpily comes in, uh, in obedience to Baba's orders and then interprets Baba and Baba says to Mama, what is this you are telling? No, Baba, he behaves very rudely with you these days and I can't bear the sight of this. And She was all uh, flustered and um, depressed, you know, after the, the recent incidents of Papa's passing probably. Yeah, yeah. And Eraj always being busy, you know, with yeah. Baba. He had so much work those days yeah. that he would, he would flare up with anything. So Mama would feel concerned about this, you know. So ultimately now Baba is going and she was feeling Baba's separation also. So something must have happened in her which triggered out all this. So Baba, I think, I am fearing that he'll become your Judas, Baba, and what will happen? So Baba says, no, no, he's my Peter. He's my right hand. Don't have no worry about him. You have no idea how fortunate you are to have such a son and all that. Baba was consoling her. <laughs> so it was a high-powered drama there. All uh, other people were active doing their scurrying about and packing things and all. And here this little <laughs> thing was going on. And then Baba consoled her and said, No, you mustn't feel like that. Be brave and I'm always with you and now I've, I have a mind to call you at Merazad very soon. So that quietened her quite a bit uh-huh. and then she calmed down and then of course 
the, uh, the activity started again. Eraj was all the while wanting to go off, you know, because <laughs> there were so many things. If anything would be left out, then uh, yeah. there, there would be tr- lots of trouble for Eraj. So he had to attend to so many minor things also. Yeah winding up his sh- his office and all the correspondence and everything mm-hmm. he had to do from Guru Prasad then shift it back to Merazad. Yeah. yeah. So <coughs> then as usual uh, um, Baba would be going to Ban Garden. Ban Garden was quite close by, you know. Uh, <coughs> there was a big road leading from Guru Prasad towards the river mm-hmm. and at the end of that road, before you cross the river, is the is the Ban Gardens, mm. and there was a big mango tree in in the Ban Gardens. And before leaving for Merazad, Baba would, uh, as a sort of last farewell to his Puna lovers, he would go and uh, perch himself below the big mango tree. Where in, where in the old days, Babajan also used to come and sit. I, I was you were, told. You, were, you had told the story about Babajan uh, coming to Bun Gardens, isn't that? Yeah, yeah. Family. So the same place. Yeah, same place. Right. So it was a huge, big mango tree, very ancient tree, uh, the big girth, and there was a small platform around it. Hmm. But uh, we would take a chair for Baba and have, would arrange it in. Uh, beforehand so Baba's car would go there and then Baba would get down and sit on the chair and then uh, there would be ba- all Puna lovers gathered there and uh, Baba would be there for some time they would sing Baba's Aarti and then Baba would just wave at everybody get into the car and drive off and they would keep watching Baba's car crossing over the bridge mm. from it could be seen from Ban Gardens mm. the bridge which crossed the river and then Baba would so before Baba would get into the car which took him to Nagar he would first I think be driven in Adi's car mm. and then after crossing the bridge Baba would get down and get into the women's car they would be sent ahead the women wouldn't be in uh, during this darshan program mm-hmm. so the change of cars would take place mm-hmm. the baba would travel in adi's old fleet master that you still have yeah. in, in nazar yes. baba would go in that car to bangal mm-hmm. 